For those who don't know, my name is Grant Bennett. Uh, I was an executive producer for the project. Here with some amazing friends, family, uh, creatives um, that were all brought together through Adobe. Um, I'll definitely allow for them to introduce themselves. We, we, did, we really just want to sit down and have a conversation about our experiences, um, us flying out here, um, all our different individual creative experiences, but also just kind of looking toward the future and seeing what that might hold for each of us. For sure. Exactly. No, for sure. Now, that's what's up, man. I'm Dorian Kirkwood. I'm an owner and operator of Crown Media, a creative agency based out of Washington, D.C. Uh, we were part of the Adobe Max program this year and uh, figuring out how we can all collaborate and, you know, make these worlds collide of creativity, culture, um, and meaningful content. Appreciate y'all having us and, you know, appreciate everybody being here. Well, my name is Ariel Robinson. I am a multimedia journalism student at North Carolina A&T State University. But outside of being a student, I am a multidisciplinary artist. I work in a lot of different mediums, but most people know me from my photography because I'm the author of the Modern Day Black Alphabet book. Nice. Um, and I also make music sometimes, but you know, we kind of working on that. I did the Adobe Max conference while in school, so I was trying to juggle that and get my assignments done before 11.59. But, you know, I love the rush. It's yeah. fun. So nah, I'm excited to see how I can continue to create while also still being in school. Because I like being a student. Facts. Sure. I love that. Sure. Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Casey Merriweather Hawkins. I am a graduate of Tuskegee University. I graduated with an animal science degree. But as you can see, I am not using that. <laughs> I am a creator. Um, I am a visual storyteller. Still trying to figure out exactly what the rest of that entails, but I can tell you I'm a photographer, I'm a creative director, and thanks to Adobe Max, I'm now a filmmaker, which is super dope. Um, thank you. And so with the Adobe Max conference, I was actually able to champion my own story. Um, finding my confidence in being a creator and artist and being able to call myself that and say it proudly. Yeah, that's what said is done. Awesome. Um, I'm Julian Turner. Uh, Graduate of Morehouse in 2020. Um, went into USC for a few years for film school, and um, you know, uh, amidst that journey through uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do um, and, and where I was going to be at, um, ran into some friends at, at Adobe and Cass, uh, ran into Grant, and I've kind of played a role in developing and. Um, building out what the Adobe Max conference, like our, our input and the creative part of that. Through that and the connections we've made, um, myself and my brother, who we uh, direct together as the Turner Brothers, uh, our company has been able to thrive and, and see a lot of um, growth and, and scaling and, and the things that we've been able to do. So super excited to be here, man, um, and excited to see uh, what we can do next. That's what's up. I, I got a question for you guys. So, me personally, <laughs> representing Howard University, it felt good to have people just like hitting me like, yo, we saw you on Adobe Max. Uh, you know, we, we saw what you were doing. We're, we're inspired. We, we appreciate you putting on for the school. Um, I also had some like kids reach out, like wanting to be a part of our programming, wanting to figure out how they can learn from us, how they can like sharpen up their skills, you know, sharpen their iron to get in these positions and get in these rooms. So I wanted to just ask y'all, like, what was y'all experience with that? Did, did y'all feel like, you know, people started reaching out or people were impacted by what we did? Like, cause I, I felt like they were, but just wanted to hear from you guys' perspectives. It was so dope. And let me first start off by saying that not only was I able to impact others through my story, but telling that story was healing for me because I went through a lot with with that transition um and it was just really dope to come out with the story and have people say wow i'm a biology major but i want to be a fashion designer and mm -hmm. i just never thought i could make that pivot you know so having those conversations and hearing that people cry while they watch my film mm -hmm. and having a father who i have no idea where he's from um but he reached out to me on linkedin and was like i have two daughters and hearing this really like inspired me and i'm happy mm -hmm. you told this story so mm -hmm. It was an unmatched feeling, and I just pray that I'm able to continue to tell stories that just inspire. Yeah, that's, that's important, man. That's important. That's super crazy. I think the thing for me is always being important, like like being a tangible asset. Yes. Right, somebody yeah. that kids in my neighborhood, like where I'm from in North Carolina, or whether we're at Morehouse, like we can pull up the campus and they can see us, they can touch us, they can imagine being us because we're, we're not like these mythic figures, right? So to be able to connect with Adobe, um, 
just producing a project, right? Like not even really sitting from like a creative lens, but just more so behind the scenes, just showing different lanes for a lot of these kids. And I think for all of us, we are like very visible, right? And we're very tangible and we can actually like reach out and touch whoever um, that comes in contact with us. So I think it's super important, like you yeah. brought up, or just to kind of be like that tangible asset yeah. in, in the communities that we come I, from. I agree because like, how, how are these people going to know what they can do if they yeah. never see it? You know, representation, authentic representation sure. and storytelling, yeah. like she sure. said, is, is vital. That's I vital. think for me, in my experience, like even creating the video, I was struggling. I'm like, I just don't know like what I want to say, how I want to say it. And so the basis of my whole entire video is not knowing. So like in the actual video, I'm like going around to these physical places and the stories are already there. But a lot of kids, like they don't realize that like they're getting up every day, going to school, living their life, the connections that they're creating, those are the stories that need to be told. You don't have to go out and search and find it. So when somebody is on this platform, like myself, and I'm able to tell them like, oh no, my story is unique to me and where I'm at, and your story is unique to you, then they're like, oh, okay, bet. All right, now I can do that. I can get my phone, I can create it, as opposed to like thinking that it's away from you like it's out of your reach that the people who are creating these films and these documentaries and all these amazing videos that they're on this hierarchy and it's mm -hmm. like no like mm -hmm. the stories that you're experiencing are the ones they wish they could tell mm -hmm. yeah. and so I feel like I with Max and having all these people with all these unique backgrounds and skill sets it opens it up for everyone to see that like there's a place for them within like the creative journey mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. that's for sure. sure I think um the one thing that I took away from the conference in general was that um, Adobe has always felt like they supported the creative and they've always been, they've just been there when, whenever something was groundbreaking and creative um, in, in the arts. But now, like being able to see them support the creator is actually so much more inspiring um, and empowering because it's not just like these aren't, these, these aren't tools. These are, this is actual support, you know, this is not just a tool, you know, it's more than is a daunting program, you know, Adobe is actually here to support our stories that we want to tell in our arts forms that we're um, passionate about telling. So um, I think that ultimately seeing that and seeing the involvement and the support of, of Adobe and our stories is was so inspiring to um, people more so than, than um, you know, uh, actual creations. Mm. You know? For That's sure, yeah. for sure. I think in terms of like putting the project together when Cash kind of first hit me up a couple years about it, a couple years ago about it, it was kind of like this like unmolded, unshaped like concept of just bringing these creatives from HBCUs together, right? And I think what it's ultimately become is like a family, right? Like I like after the, the couple of days we just had, yeah. like I really <laughs> see this family, right? Let me ask you this. On a, on a grander scale, what do you think these brands can do to actually help further impact us? So a lot, all of us are obviously appreciative for the look, appreciative for the opportunity to get exposure, to get our stories out there. Um, but it, it's always more, right? It, it can always be more expensive, be a little bit more. Like me personally, I think that brands have to get not only the creators in the room and the creatives in the room, but tell our stories on the same level that they would tell any other story. You know, it's not a less than story. It's not a side story. You know, we should be the main story as well because we're the ones that are pushing these brands. We use these products. You know what I mean? We live and die by these products. We we feed our families off of these products. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, why are we in the back background? Right. And I feel like a lot of these companies could learn just from saying, hey, we're going to show value and appreciate you just how you appreciate us. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that it, it will bring a lot of synergy to all parties and it evolved. Right. So I think number one, it's so important to not only tell our stories, but let us tell our stories mm -hmm. and let us stay mm -hmm. authentic to our stories. I was talking to Ari about this literally yesterday. Like it's honestly discouraging when you go into an opportunity with a brand and they say, you know, we want you to be artistic. We want you to be creative. We want you to be truthful. But then you give them that and it's like, oh, but let's try it this way instead. Mm -hmm. That's not true to me. That's not true to my experiences. And for me, being a storyteller, I like to tell authentic stories mm -hmm. because for me, that's what's most important. Like Ariel said earlier, like I'm not one of those people that tries to dig for a story. 
I tell stories based off of everyday life Mm -hmm. and everyday experiences and everyday Mm -hmm. people. And so, yeah, I just feel like it's so important to give creators the platform to be authentic but then also allow them to tell you how they want that to look. Mm, nice. Take feedback. Learn what's going to help them. I feel like they feel like they know what's going to help us. But it's like, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask like, you know, okay, so here's how we're thinking about doing the rollout. But what do you think? Right. On the back end now, it's, it's my job as someone who's in, a, in production or, or someone who's uh, running a nonprofit, right, to help bridge those gaps. Because I understand that it's not just getting hope when you're in college. It's not just getting in these spaces once you're out of college. It's the whole cycle, it's like right? It's, it's really yeah. it's really the whole cycle, right? Because what it does is puts people in position as they get older to want to give back, right. right? We can't expect like anything if we don't have people in those spaces really vouching and saying like, yo, this is how it works because I went through it. I'm a product right. of it, right? And I think right. that's why we're in these seats that we're in now. Like, we're really products of all those different experiences, right? And, and us giving back game in like a setting like this is just... A byproduct of those type of things. That's right. right. Yeah. I think um, I think we're all here just because like, um, and we feel like this is like the first opportunity. Honestly, I feel like this is the first opportunity that we've been able to have and within Adobe to tell our story. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, sure. I think we're just so excited about what potential there is. I mean, I've I've sat in rooms with Adobe and pitched ideas and I still got those ideas that I want to get done but it's like um, you know I think the the most impactful thing brands can do is be proactive rather than reactive yeah. and I think you know when we talk about um, you know the uh, KPNGs of yeah. the world that are yeah. literally dropping short films that are getting millions of views and traction just organically because it's authentic storytelling and it's proactive storytelling. And the brands that are doing this aren't even storytelling brands at all. Right. At all. Like they're just finding authentic voices and amplifying them. Um, and I think this opportunity as Adobe is literally the key to most of our creative mediums right now. I think there's huge opportunity to be able to amplify voices, Mm -hmm. how we're doing with the Max Conference, but do that um, in a way that's not meeting a quota or not just yearly or not just getting X amount of people, but actually being intentional and um, and having impact as the goal of it. Um, Yeah, and I think think scale too. Um, Scale is a really important topic because I think oftentimes brands do little activations and they feel like, oh, we did it. We, we, we good. But really, that's actually small and minute to what like our community really needs. You know, um, it starts a- as a youth, you know, what you want to get into, you know, you, you looking at that early, you know, it goes from you want to be a firefighter and a policeman or an NBA player and a rapper to, you know, whatever that is. But what molds that? What shapes that? Um, I feel like brands have an opportunity to help mold and shape that. Um, imagine if an Adobe got just off of not not like position itself not to just be online like an online leader of, of creativity, but an in the marketplace leader of creativity. What if they help you know open up centers for these kids to where we can teach them just how me and you teach them already, just so we can you know show them a different side, just so they can see how the camera works, how. How Premiere Pro really works. How to you know make your logos better on Illustrator without having to YouTube every little piece that takes away your whole day. You know yeah. it's a whole thing. Like how can we create programs that actually help the core problem and not just kind of like appease us by giving us a short spot? You know. That being said, I think like what we what we failed to to say and not to brag on everybody, but everybody here has we have these ideas because we have the network. Yeah. to do it yeah. we actually and i think it's not that adobe isn't doing these things but it's adobe isn't doing these things in our communities mm-hmm. to where we can see it you know yeah. there are people growing up and knowing how to there are people that are out there that have access to right. figure out photoshop yeah, there are there are, yeah <laughs> you know we were one of you know yeah. what i'm saying and we happen to be those that the, the lucky ones that got through it but it's like okay there are people that need this opportunity as well that we have the network we have we already have these events you know we have these non-profits we have yeah. these businesses that right. are in the community teaching adobe stuff yeah. like we are all doing that yes. and what can we do with the support of adobe in doing to that to, to continue back. to reach right. back how can yeah. we work together to amplify these voices and to be able to go okay this is not just an event you know this is 
um, you know, what's what's next? What are we doing? Are we are we doing a sneaker collab with yeah, a shoe yeah, brand, right. a pop up event where we learn how to design sneakers? Right. You know, are we doing a are we doing an art show? Are we doing a concert? Are we doing a short film competition? Oh, work? Are, right. are we yeah, giving yeah, the praise yeah. to the young creators that yeah. or or the yeah. mid creators? Or like you right. said, the old lady that just started and creating. Are we praising those people right. for their work? Right. And that's what I wanted to get into. Like, it's not just about having access in schools. All right. Because right. when you go home. Do you still have that access? Right. No. And Dorian, to piggyback off of what you said, you know, the past couple of days about how you had a program yeah. where you were able to get all the software yeah. in school, but you go home and it's like, now you got to pay for it, yeah. you know? And I think it's so important, like that accessibility is so important because nine times out of 10, you're going to create your best work when you're in your own space, when yeah. you're in your own zone. Yeah. And so... Just to go even further, like, let's be real. There are a lot of creators out here, undercover creators out here mm -hmm. that aren't in art schools, that mm -hmm. aren't in, yeah. you know, yeah. film programs, whatever the case may be. I didn't take any art classes, none. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being that I grew my love for storytelling and photography, videography, whatever, and had to learn all this stuff on my own, it's kind of like I think about the people who want to learn it, but don't have the confidence to learn it, don't have the access to learn it also don't have the money to learn it. And I'm just like, it would be really cool if they would go outside of just universities, high schools, middle schools, elementary schools, and actually take it like really into communities. Like, I don't know, link up with the YMCA or just, yeah. you know, right. random programs that are just, you know, sporadic around the place and right. just see who you can find. Cause you just never know who might be right. undercover, yeah. like, you know, artists. Now you said yeah. something too, to, uh, good too. I think it was, uh, we were speaking about just getting in the community. Mm -hmm. As far as like installations, you know, yes. giving a, people a place to feel inspired to even want to be creative or feel creative or even think about, oh, that's, you know, that's dope. Like, let me, I wonder what I could do or I wonder, you know, what, what I could do in my home, even if it's small as them, you know, being creative in their home, you know, and figuring out like, okay, what Adobe program or what program period can I use to like pull up my creativity? But what's even more important is for black children, especially to know that art is accessible to us yeah. because I tell this story all the time about growing up in South Carolina and every art museum trip was European art. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw my first black art exhibition and it was Kwame Brathwaite's Black is Beautiful show, I was sold. I was blown away. I was yeah. like, oh, I want to do photography. Right. I want to create and I want to show other kids that this is something they can do. They can, mm -hmm. they can tell stories. They can take portraits and they can create something as beautiful as this that can inspire the next generation. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm on the same line as Casey. I wanted to see us build something that we can put other creators on and not six. What about 60? What exactly. about 600? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? What about all the countries? What, what about internationally? Like, yeah. what, about, what about our program can we do to make this have longevity? Um, and like she said, can we can we make it have wings? Can we have an in-person portion of it? Can we go have panels, reach out to students? Can we go see these videography clubs that have 60 students that are not all necessarily graphic designers, but they want to be recognized. They want to you know, be on the cutting edge of technology with Adobe. Like, what can we do to create a program that's sufficient and sustainable for all creatives? Yeah. What can we do? Yeah, y'all know me. I'm all about ecosystems and infrastructure. So. Whatever that conversation, continuing that conversation around building those things, I think that's easily the, the best pathway for us to be able to just be in the space. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, my perfect partnership would definitely include creating like a tangible item. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, if they're coming into this program, they're leaving out with a physical book, a physical right. like piece of work that like is living yep. and is gonna continue to live because I'm a museum girl, I'm a gallery girl. I think it's so important because a lot of our like history and stories are forgotten. They're construed or like people get them wrong because there's not a physical thing saying like, no, this is what it is mm -hmm. because I made it this. So my perfect right. partnership would include some kind of physical item that's continuing to be made over and over again. I yeah. love that. I think um, for me, I think it's um, being in a position now after these these last few MAX conferences, um, being that, that bridge for, for Adobe and being that bridge for, um, you know, 
um, to our community and to where impact opportunity is to be able to bring back to Adobe um, and, and, and if hopefully um, with the support and um, the support in bringing a product, uh, whether that's any medium, Adobe touches everything. And so mm -hmm. I think um, we have an opportunity to touch everywhere in our community and do that with impact in mind and do that all year round and do that, um, you know, intentionally with resource and support, um, you know, that, that, that Adobe gives everyone else, I think. Yes. yes. That's how we win.